What would you tell somebody that if they first, if they were in a, in, a, in a traffic accident or an illness or something, and they had something physically change in them, what advice would you give them on how to deal with that? You just said it. Deal with that. Well, don't get an attitude with this me. <laughs> I just asked. <laughs>that's Jenny who you're about to see more of she's magnificent you know the whole point of you just have to laugh if you've attended a lot of these classes and attended them but watched them listened to them, had some fun with it is the secret is no matter what happens in your life no matter what happens to you you have to deal with it you have to deal with the emotion and once you get to that emotion what helps you deal with that emotion and also can help you do it many things but humor is the best and you may ask yourself how is it possible to find humor at a scene where you're in a horrific traffic accident and you're being taken away by life light and you don't know if you're going to live or die. Driving down Interstate 35, it was an evening in August, about 9 o'clock at night, and uh, I see a semi off on the shoulder. Didn't worry about it. They got their own CBs, no big deal. So I'm driving and I see his cab come off from the side. Uh, he's now making a U-turn across the interstate, illegal, dangerous. And he's blocking both lanes, both shoulders, and the median. And I'm going 55 and driving someone else's car, a little two-seater CRX. And I'm luckily alone. Do I try to go in front of him and take out oncoming traffic in northbound lanes or hit his gas tank? Found out later that I spun around about eight times. And then as I am uh, slowing down and coming to a stop, it's because I'm getting ready to hit his, the back of his back trailer right here. And right, I mean, just half of an inch from my face, I black out. I miss the, the impact of that because that's what the mind does. It shuts you down so you don't experience certain things like that. And uh, miss the jaws of life cutting me out. Missed all the first responders, all the excitement and the traffic and you know, the sirens and lights and everything. And they summoned a life light. And right as they're loading me on the life light, I come to and they said, oh, she's conscious, she's conscious. Let's get some information. Do you know your name? Do you know your name? I said, yeah, so I gave my name. Do you know how old you are? Whoa, you don't ask a lady your age. You said that to them? Yeah, <laughs> and they said, whoa, we got a live one here. I said, let's keep it that way. And then you know, <laughs> did my vanishing act and blacked out again. She laughs, she passes out, she wakes up. She doesn't stop. She doesn't stop with the humor <laughs> in going through all these crazy situations because that's Jenny. They came in and told me, you got to do physical therapy. We need to train you how to get off of your bed and into your wheelchair. Now, over my bed was one of these triangles that I would use to help pull myself up. Mm -hmm. There's this young physical therapy guy, and don't know him, don't know anything about him, and he has what I call the pizza board. It's a slide board where you're supposed to put it under one leg and then slide yourself down to your wheelchair next to your bed. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so we get it all propped up, and I'm getting ready, to, I'm starting to hang on to that prop above me, no, 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 you can't use that. You can't use anything that you don't have in your home. This is to train you how to live in your home and transfer from bed to wheelchair. So you don't have that in your home, you can't use it. I say, you don't know what I've got in my bedroom at home. <laughs> and that kid took his piece of board and walked out the room. What was the physical damages to? What happened in that wreck? Okay, um, the head injury resulted in um, what's called sixth nerve palsy. <laughs> Did you get that? So, so before your eyes wouldn't do that before? Uh, no, they were in sync, just like <laughs> yours. Now they're not. Now they're not. They're and not. they said, uh, this is a nerve thing, and because it's the longest nerve all around the head, that's the one that usually is the most affected with yeah. any kind of impact. Yeah. So it's very common. Did that take you, I mean, once you see this and you realize Marty Feldman's dead, I can get all of his parts now. <laughs> I contacted you know, the guy Hollywood. that played Igor oh, and, yeah, and sure. Mel Brooks. I mean, <laughs> I mean was, was that a hard thing for you to deal with, th this physical difference in your eye now? Well, what I did initially for a couple of years, I wore an eye patch all the time. Now, that was real annoying, and in the heat, and, you know, it's like this. And, plus, people would see you and act like you were, you know, a leper, or people would grab their children like I'm, you know, going really? to molest their children. Yeah, really. <laughs> and some kids were bold and had no fear and would go, hey, are you a pirate? Yeah, I'd go, yeah, ahoy matey, arg. Now this side doesn't move at all? That's right. Okay, so it's stuck that way. It's stuck that way. Can you see out of it? Oh yeah, so I have double vision. So you can see this way and that way? Yes, and that's wow. why I used to wear an eye patch because 
that would narrow it down to one, but then I've got no peripheral, which I pretty much don't anyway. And I'm always <laughs> running into people and flailing and hitting somebody <laughs> and knocking some kid off a chair. Okay. You know? <laughs> I'm going to ask because, you know, comics and people do jokes about that because people meet people like you and they go, I didn't know which eye to look at. <laughs> they don't. People get nervous. And when I see they're, they're uncomfortable, yeah. depending on who it is, I'll just let them suffer. Or <laughs> You'll let them suffer? Oh, sure. Depending on who it is. Or if I feel bad for them, then I'll address them, you know, directly or I'll close an eye so they'll know. Otherwise, the person next to them I've had two people respond, you know, you know I'm looking at you, this one doesn't know because this eye is looking at them. Well, I had my granddaughter do that. Seriously, she was like two or three when this happened, and she was in trouble. And she was sitting on a couch in my living room next to her mother. And I was just sitting there, and she's being sassy, which of course is not acceptable, but I didn't want to interfere mm -hmm. with the mother's discipline. And um, so I'm looking at my daughter. <laughs> And Brooklyn says, quit looking at me, Gamma! Jenny proves the point. Again, what doesn't she? She proves the point. If you can laugh at it, you can deal with it, and when you laugh at yourself, you heal yourself, and you keep moving through it. And she proves that right here. Oh, but hold on. In the next class coming up, what could possibly be funny about getting a hip joint replacement? And in the middle of a field in Kansas, your hip joint pops out. What could be funny about that? See you at the next class, because Jenny's going to tell you.